Here we go, part five, draft dissection going right up the east coast of Australia here with the Swans, the Suns, and the Cats. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. If you've missed any of the other parts, they'll be in the description or the pinned comment, so you can find them there. If you like the video, click that like button. It helps more people see it. The more people see it, the more people can enjoy it. The more people that can join the Daz Talks footy family, the best supporter base on YouTube when it comes to footy, and I would argue the entire platform. So get involved there, guys. I hope you enjoy all the strategies, all the dissections, the players in play for your team's picks. Let's go. Part five, here it comes. For the Swans, let's actually start backwards. I really doubt they take someone at pick 80, and if they do... Good luck. I'd rather guess the Powerball numbers, to be honest, than guess who's going to be at 80. At their second-to-last pick, which I think is 69, I do think they go a Ruckman here. I know that they're still light on Ruckman, and I'm going to talk about Isaac Keeler in a tick, but I do think that Hickey and Laddams are not enough on the depth chart. They are going to need to develop someone else. Hickey's not going to be around forever, and yes, he had a really good year last year, and I'm not going to overreact to the grand final performance too much, but I don't think Peter Laddams is a number one Ruckman. So I think they do need another one. So go to the draft, draft one, whether that is at 69 or 42, that remains to be seen. If a Max Noble does get to 42, and I don't think he should get past St. Kilda, he would definitely have to be an option there. But the thing with the Swans at 42 is someone's going to fall. Last year was the likes of Matty Roberts, Arlo Draper, Zach Taylor, and the Swans ended up with Roberts. Someone is going to fall. Is it a, a Noah Long? Is it a Jackson Binns? Is it a Jason Gilby? Who is it going to be that falls? They could potentially take a reach if you look at some fandom picks with Adam D'Aola, I think is how you pronounce his name, the South Australian MVP from the Carnival, who's your really consistent midfielder. doesn't need to play round one, but I think with Sheldrick, Roberts, and these guys coming through, as well as the youth of Warner, of Roadbottom, who came third in the best and fairest, in one of the more underrated best and fairest finishes of last year. Perhaps unlikely, but I think someone's going to fall and they'll be able to pick them up. But it's what the Swans do with their two first round picks. I believe it's more unlikely that they do try to trade up. I do think that there is going to be enough guys around the mark that they'll be able to take full advantage. And the question for pick 17 is, do they go with Ollie Hotton, who might be able to impact straight away? He, I see Ollie as a guy who can rotate with Tom Papley. If Papley is at the center bounce, Hotton can play as the small forward. And the other way around, if they throw Hotton in there, Papley is going to be uber dangerous forward. I do think the Swans still need a permanent small forward, which is why Braden George does come into the equation here. Now, he's probably not going to play the first 16 weeks of uh, 2023. I was going to say 16 weeks of round one then, Jesus. Uh, the first 16 weeks of next season. So it might be a bit more of a gamble, but his natural talent and the fact that he can stay inside the forward 50 at all times and impact the game that way is going to be a real tempter for the Swans. But what are they going to do at 14? Now, Isaac Keeler would be a bit of a reach here. I don't mind it at all, given the athleticism. I don't think he uh, Matthew Jefferson gets past the Demons pick here. The, this pick, I think, is more likely to be traded away than 17. I really do. And traded away, it's not going to be for a massive fall. You think of someone like the Hawks at 24, might be a way to go. Do the Bulldogs try to get their second round pick back up there and take a couple of foundation pieces? The Pies will be around this mark. Does a team like Richmond take an asset from next year and try to go from there? Fremantle, could they move in? Could they lump in 33 and maybe a pick from next year as well. It's hard to say, but if they do keep 14, I think they're just going to wait for someone to fall or Henry Hustwaite is definitely an option at this point, perhaps a little bit earlier than some might think he goes, but the Swans are going to be able to figure out how he plays the best. I think better than any other team in the competition. But if someone like a Jed Buzzlinger does manage to fall, which would be genuinely extraordinary, do they look at an Elijah Hewitt from WA? Uh, if he's still at this point, which I suspect that he will be, hard to know. I do think the Swan team might go for the Western Australian that West Coast don't if they take Ed Allen over Elijah Hewitt. I still think the Swans would look at Hewitt even though they've got that midfielder depth. But I think the best fit 
for the Swans here at 14 is who of the bunch around that mark are left or try and trade back and pick up some assets. But just keep an eye on this pick. Someone will fall or the Swans fall back. I'm really looking forward to seeing what that is. But I think they come out of this draft with a forward 50 threat, a Ruckman, and a real top quality player. And the Swans, I think they're going to get another tick in this draft. How can they not? They're in a beautiful spot. Yes, they got the grand final belting and wherever they sit in 2023, I think will be, unless it's a flag, a disappointment in everyone's eyes, which I think is a shame. I think the Swans are in a beautiful, beautiful position, but I've got no doubt, and this is how good their culture is, that they're going to come out of this draft looking spick and span. Two options for the Cats. If Jai Clark's still on the board, it's him. If he's not, it'll be Jed Buzzlinger. I could just about end the Cats bit there, but Jai Clark, they're calling him the Selwood clone, and, you know, no pressure, young man, but the Geelong Falcons boys, a contested bull, Finds the ball on the inside, the outside, a ripper kid's got some leadership qualities as well, and he's just the kind of guy that feels like a Geelong player, if that makes sense. Jed Buzzlinger would provide an absolute hell of a tandem alongside Sam DeConning. And what do they do at 58? Well, they're one of the only teams that don't really need to take a Ruckman here to develop. They've got Shannon Neal, they've got Toby Conway, as well as, as of course, their older Ruckman as well. At 58, I think they're just going to take the best talent available, and that's okay. But Geelong's offseason already has one of the greatest ticks of all time. They can't really lose with Clark or Buzzlinger here. So, I mean, it's just unfair that the reigning premiers are just having an offseason this good, isn't it? And I don't say that out of malice. I say it out of pure envy and jealousy there. So, the Cats, they're going beautifully, and they'll get Clark or Buzzlinger. Gold Coast as well, they've kind of got two options at their pick five, and that is Bailey Humphrey or Ruben Ginby. I think Humphrey is better served for them, and not just because he's the Isaac Rankin replacement. I think he works up the ground a little bit better than Isaac did. Isaac is the perfect forward pocket type of player. That's where he roams. I think Humphrey is more of a half forward flanker type of player. This kid is an absolute ripper, and when you come from Maui, you got to be tough to play footy in Maui. Let me tell you, for all you non-Victorians are unaware of what Maui is like. Not a hell of a lot to do in Maui. There is a, a Maccas and a footy ground. That's about it out at Maui and a couple of good hotel uh, motels as well. So what else can you say? But this kid's tough. He's uncompromising. He's a good user of the footy and he'll be dangerous in the forward third of the ground. I nearly said the ball there. The forward third of the ground. I hope he can use the entire footy there. Gimby is an interesting one given that they didn't get Joe Hannison in the offseason, so they're clearly looking for some half-back depth, which is what Gimby can bring on the outside. I talked about him in the Eagles video, but he's got the dash. He's a meters gain type of player. Does Ben Long take that kind of role? I'm not sure, but personally, I think Humphrey's as close to a, a lock as I can almost pick. I would be surprised if they did go Gimby, to be honest, but I'm saying Humphrey here, and at 45... I think there could be Bailey McDonald still on the board, who is your line breaker. So that kind of fits both agendas there. Why am I struggling to talk throughout the Gold Coast bit? But that'll suit the agenda there for the Suns, I think. And if they can come out with those two picks in the draft and whoever they want to get at 68 might be best available. Is there a, a kid in the NEFL who's dominating? They could go down that road. But I think if they can come out of the draft with Bailey Humphrey and Bailey McDonald, a couple of Baileys, then they're going beautifully. So that's all it for the Suns, I think. But that's it for part five of the draft dissection. I apologize for a couple of verbal slip-ups there, but we got through it together, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Click the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already to join the Daz Talks footy family. And most of all, take care.